Hello and welcome back to Friday Minis. Now, today's episode is what they would call based on a true story. So I'm just going to start by telling said story and then we will move on to talk about the learning points later on. So here's the deal. I actually use Twitter DMs quite a bit and what I've realized, you know, in the recent weeks is that every time I sent a message, the timestamp told me that, well, the message was sent four minutes ago. Of course, naturally, I assume it's a Twitter bug because, well, it's happening on Twitter, right? Until more recently when I went to another service, which I can't remember what it is. Again, I made a post or sent a message. And again, I saw the same thing. The timestamp of that message told me that it was four minutes old on the very moment that I've actually, well, hit send. This was a service completely unrelated to Twitter, so it's probably not the same bug. And that is when I came to realize that, hey, it was probably my system time. This leads me on to sort of the main point for this episode. And that is the fact that if your system time is off, what happens is things start to not work as you would expect them to work. You see, the reason why I was seeing that four minute off problem was not because, you know, Twitter was doing something wrong or my computer was doing something wrong necessarily. Instead, that just came about from a disagreement between the server time versus the local time on my computer. You see, when I first send my Twitter DM, it goes to Twitter's servers and it gets timestamped there. Then that timestamp comes back and basically, well, the JavaScript that is running on my browser compares that time with, well, the time now. How does JavaScript get the time now? Well, it just asks my computer and my computer gives it the system time. It then performs a subtraction between these two times to find out basically how long ago that message was written. This is a good way of doing things, but it assumes that my system time agrees with the server's time. When it doesn't, that is when this bug I've described actually happens. Because my system time was ahead by four minutes, anything that the server records as now when compared against my system time would be four minutes apart. And that is essentially the result I was seeing. Of course, the reason why my system time was running off is because I'm pretty sure my CMOS battery is dead. In fact, my CMOS battery is now so gone that at one point of time, well, my date and time was completely obliterated. It was completely reset to, you know, sometime in the year 2000. And what happened as a result is that I couldn't get online at all. The reason for this is because security certificates used to deliver, you know, HTTPS secure websites actually have both an expiry date as well as a starting date. And if the current date didn't fall within that range, the certificate is treated as invalid and your browser just wouldn't load that page. Because my system time was so off, that check basically failed for every secure website that I tried to connect to. So I couldn't get on my Gmail, I couldn't get on really any service. So yeah, that's the reason why, you know, you actually have to keep your system time current. Thankfully, most computers now are capable of synchronizing with some kind of online service to get the current time. I'm not sure why my computer didn't do it on these occasions, but yeah, I've had to actually sort of manually tweak it from time to time. Obviously, the good and actually correct solution would be to, you know, get my CMOS battery replaced, but I might just get a new computer. I'm thinking about that anyway, because, well, this guy's kind of old. Anyway, that's all the time we have for storytelling today. Hopefully, well, you gained some insight today. You know, something that we don't really think about, that is the system time, has its surprising set of side effects, if not set correctly. Again, that's it for this episode. Thank you very much for watching, and until next time, you're watching 0612 TV on nerdfirst.net. Thank you very much for watching. If you like my work and are feeling generous, you can shoot me a one-time donation on PayPal or sign up for a recurring one on Patreon. Of course, you can simply like, comment and subscribe. You know the deal. For more videos, links to my channel and a related playlist are on screen. Thank you for your support.